There he is. Hey. Pause this thing here. I'll turn the video down. I'm audio down, okay, buddy? A little bit. Here he's down here with me, playing with his toys. Live from Brazil. Yeah, yes. we're live here in Brazil. Here right, he's down so here playing with his toys. Greeny's uh, upstairs, relaxing for a minute. Okay. Now, is that you, how do you how do you say your last name? Good question. It's it's actually pronounced Staley. It's Staley. actually a, yeah. It's actually a, um, a very unusual way to pronounce a name that's from I guess a German. Name. I think what happened was when people came here from for World War Two, they they altered the name because um, the whole World War Two stigma. And uh, so even when I asked Germans, Germans pronounce it differently than Staley. So okay, I've uh -oh. always I've heard it so many different ways. And then and then you call her Rini. So Rini, Karini, yeah. All right, but it's Karine. Karini. Okay, Karini. Okay. Okay, I'll um do you mind starting by doing a quick drop for the show? Just like, hey, this is Paul Staley from 90 Day Fiance and you're watching the Dominic and Daddy show. Okay, sorry. I had someone call in on my phone, so your audio went up. Okay. okay. Do you do a drop for the show? Just like, hey, this is Paul uh, Staley from yeah, 90 Day Fiance and you're watching the Dominic and Daddy show. My audio went out. I want to pop out. <laughs> my audio went out. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's He's coming back in. Okay. It's a great interview. Oh, he's going to come back. So anyway, as you know, our surprise guest is Paul Staley from the hit show 90 Day Fiance. Hey, everybody. Hey, Angela. All right. Is that better? I yeah. Frozen. I think we'll make sure the thing's connected right on my thing here. Yeah, it should be. That should be good. Now, on my end, you're frozen. Guys, you're frozen. Yeah, something's weird. Okay. It's still frozen? Uh, yeah, it says uh, they're saying they're saying that it's frozen. Yeah. Okay. Want to try it again? Yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, let me get out of here All and right. try it again. In the meantime, we will look at my hair. Let's do a hair check. Uh... Hang on, let me see if I can get rid of Remove ball. Okay. No one was frozen? Shit. Okay, that's my mistake. But he's not frozen. So it was my... Okay. Okay, that's my mistake. Okay. It was me. It was just frozen. It's my fault. Go live with... All right, let's see if he's here. Paul. Is he in here? There he is. Okay. All right, I think we're good this time. We're going to do it. Okay, the better? All right. Yeah, could you do a quick drop for the show? Just like, hey, okay. this is Paul Staley from 90 Day Fiance, and you're watching the Dominic Natty Show. Hey, this is Paul Staley from 90 Day Fiance, and you're watching the Dominic Natty Show. I was saying, <laughs> I think it's your name wrong. Yeah, that's right, Dominic Natty. Dominic, Dominic Natty, right? Yep. Ah, this is Paul from 98 Fiance, and you're watching the Dominic Natty show. <laughs> Dominic Natty. Show. Take three. All right, Dom, say, say your name one more time. Dominic Natty, like Cincinnati. Dominic Natty. Okay. This is Paul Staley from 98 Fiance, and you're watching the Dominic Natty show. Yes. Okay, yes. I'll do my radio intro, and we'll get started with the question. Okay, <laughs> welcome back to the Dominic Natty Show on Intellectual Radio in Chicago and iHeart Radio. I've been telling you about our special guest, and the time has come. Your favorite cast member from 90 Day Fiance, Paul Staley's on with us today. Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing really, really, really good. Thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, Paul, this is there's so many questions. There's a lot of questions that, that people have, and and to start here, um, are you and Karini living in the same house and sleeping in the same bed? We are uh, currently living in the same house, and uh, as long as I'm not in trouble and sleeping in the dog house, then typically I'll try to sleep in the same bed with her and you know and my son. So it all depends on uh, on the mood of the day, really how the things are going. If things are going bad, then, you know, I'm in the doghouse. But it's all, it's all right. I get there one day at a time. 
Okay, so so you guys are together working on your marriage. We're working on it best that we can, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, has Corinne ever cheated on you? And if so, when was the last time? I, I you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to, to talk about. I'm probably going to have to... Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, anything can happen anytime. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I'm probably going to to be respectful and uh, not have to avoid that right now. To be honest with you. Okay, no problem. And, and that goes for all. You know, I'm asking questions basically that that everyone you know is curious about. If I ask anything you don't want to, then then I understand. Um, yeah, people make mistakes in life, and things happen. You know, when when we were when I was in my twenties, I'm sure when you in your twenties, we did crazy things. It happens. You know, it is what it is. It's being in the 20s. It's a wild time. Have, have you ever cheated on her? No. No. Okay. Gotcha. Um, has Corinne ever brought your child around anyone that you are uncomfortable with? Maybe someone with a criminal record? Yeah, that, that has happened. Um, that has happened, and I've, I've definitely voiced my concerns with her um, on that. Uh, made it abundantly clear um, for several occasions. I th hopefully now we're on the same page. Um, like I said, I, you know, what she does and what she wants to go out and do, that's her personal business. She wants to go somewhere, she hangs somebody, she can hang out and do whatever she wants. It's her life, you know. But my son, to me, is very important. My children are very important. Um, I don't like them going around, you know, and then finding out later they're around certain people that, you know, just – it's scary for any parent to you know those kind of facts. Like what I saw been horrifying. So I uh, just made it clear. Like, if you want to do something, it's fine. Let me know. I'll watch the kids. That's fine. You know, you do you, but let me watch the kids. And that was my big thing on that is I uh, tried to explain to you numerous times. And nobody, you don't eat the hand sanitizer bottle. Give that to daddy. Okay. Is that um, you, uh, you know, just, you know, live your life, do your thing, but, you know, make sure our children are in a, you know, up close, safe, best environment. You want to go out and, you know, dance or drink or whatever, whatever you want to do. That's, that's you. That's your body, your choice, your life. But just, you know, make sure, you know, my children are okay. And to my, I see someone in the chat, some of the kids. Um, to my knowledge, both the children are mine. Um, with everything we had going on drama-wise, um, I consider, and actually had some some lawyers told me that maybe best for me to do an A test just to verify that I am the father. Say that if say someone disputes it, say well you're not the father. Um, da 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 da. So that there's no disputing it. So I said, he say no, you're not the father of these kids. And I said yes, I am the father. I have a DNA test saying I'm the father. Um, so I mean, obviously, if you look at Pierre, you can tell he's my kid. You can <laughs> tell he's my kid. He has my run. He looks like me. He has a lot of mannerisms. Um, so I fully believe it's my child. I really, really, really do. Here come downstairs from Karini. Karini, your favorite city, Chicago, which you want to go to, is a gentleman on there. You want to say hello? You want to say hello? She's having a... Why, did I just say hi? I just say hi? Just say hello. He's from Chicago, your favorite city. Hello. Hey, Karini, we were just talking about you. How you doing? I'm fine. You look, you look great. You just you get... How's the baby? It's okay, thank you. Yes. Good to, good to see you. Right. Have a good day. Go eating. Yes. Okay, yeah, enjoy your meal. You know, grab some, some food with her family. Oh, she's leaving. Yeah, she's going downstairs. Her family all live in this building. We originally, we were here, we had a very nice, like, condominium. Um, and we lived to the far, we moved to the Farbella, close to be around her family. So all of her family live in this building. Uh, so like the next door neighbors, are family down one levels, her family, our family are all up and down this building, running different apartments. So it makes it easy for us to, you know, go out the door and next door is her family downstairs, her family. So she can, she gets stressed and everything else. She can just go hang out with her families. There's no fear of like being a huge drama escalation and police showing up. All we got to do, like, if, if things get out of control, I just go down and knock on her parents' door, her family's door, any of her family members, and say, hey, we're in some problems. You can come talk to her. If things still get escalated, I'll go to a hotel for the night. It's not a big deal. It's it's not a big deal. I'll go to the hotel. I'll relax. I'll, you know, come back the next day. Um, everything's fine. You know, sometimes things get bad. If it's not too bad, I'll come down, sleep on the sofa. Pierre will come downstairs and sleep with me down here. 
She's a little frustrated with that. <laughs> but I mean, Pierre decides where he wants to go, and uh, he's determined. He's very, very strong-headed um, on things. So he, he, but he's smart too, though. He's also very, very smart. But he knows what he wants, and when you tell him like no, not to do things, that was one thing that was actually really cute. The day he did, he was opening up the washer and like taking things out, and I said no, close that. He, he got kind of frustrated, he closed it, and he went over and gave me a magical finger. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a meme doing the baby, but it just blew me out of the water. Because anytime Cream gets mad at me, she'll flick me off. So you know, he sees things. He, you know, um, you know, baby see, baby do. I guess you could say. So he'll yeah. see her get mad and do that. So he'll do it. And this, you know, I get it. Babies uh, a lot of times learn sign language. I guess first, my sister's kids, both of them learn sign language where they could talk. Um, my son um is picking up a lot of things now it's been really really cute the other day he was she was trying to say mama 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 and he's just saying dad dad and then he's saying mama then he, she was saying it again and he did something i mean neither her did me, me, me and her both didn't expect to do what he did what he did he walks over to me he took off my glasses he put his gla my glasses on his face and went dad 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 i'm like oh that's so cute <laughs> and it, it's just utterly adorable that that he did that, yeah. But um, all right. Well, I just to, to answer the the first question. So you did say that she's bringing the children around men with criminal records. Like what what kind of criminal records? Like I mean, is it something like? I mean, is it there was sexual an individual abuse? that I prevented at one point. I put my foot down and 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 literally. Um, I got some some people I knew in law enforcement involved at that point um, because I I found it was I ran the background check and with the background check it came up with like uh, basic pedophile charges and I explained to her and she's like no uh, he said that's all lies it's all lies I'm like I really <laughs> don't want my son take the risk with that with my son I don't want to do that now she never actually met the individual I, I put my foot down on that one and I pushed things through and uh, so that never happened and she blocked and talked anymore but we had somebody um, from the police department talk to her you know, about this type of thing. It's, it's risky. And then another individual, um, he actually had a warrant for his arrest. Um, he had, he actually had so many DUIs. He had his license revoked. Um, he was driving down to pick her up and take driver out of state. Um, and I didn't want her, my son, first of all, going out of state. Secondly, with somebody who has no license and a warrant and drinking. So I'm like that. Oh, okay. Pierre, I want to come here and see mommy. Come here. You get the box picture? Where was that at? I know. I don't know where it went. Come on, Pierre. Come on. Can you put a clothes on him? No? Here. Come here. Pierre, he's hiding. Come here. Mom wants you to come see him for a minute. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come here. Why is he hiding? Hold on a second. One second. I'm sorry. That's all right. Come here. We're going to give you some food. Come on. We're going to behind the scenes look. Hold on. Mom wants to give you some food. It's going to be good. Hey. It's going to taste good. Hey. Lunchtime. Lunchtime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. If you need anything, let me know, okay? All right. She's get some food. She's like a living, breathing Snickers commercial. She gets hungry. She gets cranking. She gets a full belly. She's a whole, totally different person. Oh, okay. The Snickers yeah. commercial. That's just, yeah. <laughs> Quite okay. literally, no. Well, even when we're in TV show and production, um, I tried to warn them on that stuff. Like, like if you don't keep fed, then we'll shut down. Uh, she'll shut down. She won't film. She won't film for like two, three days. Hey, what's up? What do you need? Didn't we ask? Sure. Let me see what I got in my pocket. Uh, let's go. Here's, I got 100 reais. You want 100? Oh, no, no. Here, we got 10. You want just 10? Okay, that works. All right. If anything else, let me know. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Sorry, that were you asking? <laughs> no, okay. So, um, uh, and I was reading some of the comments. So, it, are you saying that she was going to take the kids around? Oh, that one, yeah, that one I prevented. That that to pedophile, but she was going to take them around a pedophile until you looked it up. Yeah, I looked it up. I saw it, and I went into it with her, and uh, that one she never got around. Him. Um, never got around him. There, the other ones that she did get around, and like um, were the ones that there was one that had like a like a really bad DUI record. Um, I didn't like him being in, in the car with him, especially without a car seat or anything like that. I know in Brazil it's normal to have car seats, but in America, and especially somebody that's has a habit of drinking and driving and hanging out and like that, I don't like that. Um, 
that was one thing, you know, taking, taking a kid out of state or meeting, you know, other people in someone else's house, their house or hotel or wherever you want to go. Um, the problem is too, and we actually very, very stressed is in um, Lexington, I don't know if Chicago is a bed or not, but also in Louisville, Louisville, Lexington, in Southern Indiana, there's actually a whole lot of um, human trafficking. It's really, really, really bad. The FBI is trying to crack down on it, doing it in broad daylight, but I mean, and uh, it gets scary. So, one thing that got, you know, really, really, really scary um, was we were fighting. Someone had reached out and offered her a job. And uh, she had told me, hey, this person offered me a job. They're doing the they talk, da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, cool. Uh, what's going on with it? Well, kind of find out it was they were offering her to – they were going to bring her and Pierre down out of state and live there and take care of them. And then they were going to fly her around to different hotels around the United States to meet with other men. So when she found out what it was. She said, I told them I didn't want to do it, but I want you to know they offered me this job and I declined it. I said, like, well, I'm proud of you. I'm glad, very glad you declined that job. I'm very, I'm, you know, I'm very glad you told me the truth and what's going on. But, you know, this is something called, it's called human trafficking. Because once they get, they, they, they lure you down, they're saying they're going to help you in Pierre. And then once they get a hold of Pierre, then they're going to hold him. Like it's collateral. And then you're basically their slave. So, um, you know, that, that to me terrified me. Um, you know, don't, you can't be going things like that. Well, she's gotten a lot better on that. Here in Brazil, um, I don't have that fear because her family's here. Our family's all here. They're all around. Um, that's one thing I was getting scared with, too. When she started, you know, going out and stuff, I was like, you know, we really got to do something to, um, you know, kind of make things better and safer. And I was like, I, I trust her family. Um, her family want her best interests. Okay, fine. So um, I actually um, went ahead and we got her, got her back in the house because she was actually, when I was down here in Brazil before uh, fixing the house up, she went off, we'll say, on vacation uh, for a little bit. And... First thing I did was try, I didn't sleep for like two days. I didn't eat anything. I was really, 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 really sad. Uh, so I cleaned up the entire house. And then after I cleaned up the entire house, it's like, you know, um, I'm going to go down to Brazil and fix that place up. Because I think, you know, whenever, I think the best and health, healthiest thing for her is to be with her family. So I came down here to Brazil. And this place was, it looked like a hoarder's nightmare. It was so bad. It was nasty. So I bug bombed the whole place. I took all the trash out. We had like a hoarder storage room. I took everything out, just everything out of there. I turned that into a new master bedroom. I turned the old master bedroom into a living room area. Um, and started fixing the house up. And then, you know, talked to her family, helped her family out. And her family, some things I did too, whenever those allegations came out, the first things I did was I had them fully translated by a Portuguese translator, and I sent them to her family. And they were horrified. And they didn't know what to believe. And they didn't really have direct communication with her at first. Uh, so until they found out the truth, you know, they didn't know what to think. And once the truth came out, her family and me were fine. Everything was okay. Um, they're like, just get her back to Brazil. We're going to help her. We're going to take care of her. And we got back here, and um, they've been very helpful. They, Like I said, Karina gets stressed or upset. She goes to her family's house. Uh, things get too crazy. Like I said, I can I go to a hotel overnight, something like that. Um, but she's got her, her friends, her family. She's got food. She's, I'm trying to really, really push her to finish her, um, her equivalency of her hospital diploma. Uh, when she dropped out of high school at 18, she always only, like, the last month of high school, she dropped out. So I was like, look, just go back. You got a few tests, and that's it. Just take the last few tests and get your house, and then go to college in America. You know, I pushed her to get her driver's license here, and then transfer that license to America. Now, in Manaus, I've seen drivers in New York, Chicago, all across the United States. I've seen some crazy driving. I've never seen as crazy driving as I have here. Utterly, utterly, utterly insane. So I was like, if you get your driver's license here, you'll be fine driving in the United States. You know, you can go to and from college, you can go to a friend's house, <laughs> hop in the car, if PA's emergency, hop in the car, you know, be able to take care of yourself. Uh, I'm really trying to push for her to be able to, you know, to have the independence, you know, where she can just they say, I have two vehicles. Like you can hop in a vehicle and you can go and do what you want to do. Uh and I'm, I'm you know just trying to promote her um, as much as I can. You know, possibly there's like cosmetology pushing her in that you know, that direction too. I think that's very healthy and good for her as well. Um trying to promote her you know, and her mental health and everything else. Because things got scary. I mean, one time I stayed, uh, I was working late with my dad, and I got home. Uh, God, it was late that night, 2, 3 in the morning, and she was outside with Pierre, just like, just like shaking. She's just walking by the street, and I had to calm her down, get her back in the house. Hey, what's going on? And back then, it was, uh, the doctor said it was more like a postpartum depression type episode or something. I don't know. Um, they had her on, she started taking Zoloft at first, but didn't really have that much of an effect. And she can't really take medication with the, you know, being pregnant and breastfeeding. So, um, and she, she was going to therapy with me and then she eventually withdrew from therapy. She didn't really like it. So uh, I had a Brazil group 
I found on Facebook, um, it was like a church group, and they actually uh, would sit down, have church meetings with her, talk to her. Um, they do it in Portuguese, and she had Brazilian friends here. It was going good until COVID, and we stopped meeting up. Um, that kind of got kind of kind of sucked on that, being able to totally honest with you. But, you know, I was going to see two therapists every week, um, and, you know, we got my all my stuff worked out. But, you know, Karini was still having some issues. So they would, I would talk to them, and then they would help me try to figure out what I can do to try to help her. Um, and go from there. And uh, I said, then I finally realized, you know, we're just going back to Brazil and came back here for a little bit to try to, you know, do what's best for everybody. And Pierre's really finally kind of opened up here a lot. I'm very happy. Pierre's really been opening up to her family. Um, he's been a lot more playful with them. So that's very, very, very good. And um, I think it's, it's a lot, really good for Karina's mental health right now. I know she wants to get back to America eventually, but yeah. Okay. So uh, but just, just to clarify, um, are you saying that she openly goes out with other men and before she does that you do a background check on them? What I'm saying is before we had an argument about it and she told her was, I said, I tell you what, if, if you want to go with the peer and everything else, I'll, 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 I'm okay with that. If I can do a background check to make sure everything's cool for you taking my son around those individuals. Um, so we got into more into her telling me or things like that too. And I think too, sometimes she was curious, but then when she did and she went across, especially the one guy, uh, he was, I don't want to say to say, but he's pretty close. He's pr pretty close to actually where you're at right now. Uh, was where he was from. Um, and she was shocked, thought he was lying. And then I found a mug shot. I was like, here's his mug shot where he's arrested for the crime and went into it back and forth with her. But like I said, she blocked him. She don't talk to him anymore. It's that's, that's over. But most of the time, you know, she's more open about it. She says, is this person, this person? I want to make sure I get the right person now. And she's like, well, he's, you know, this age and this and that. She's like, okay, it's this one. So, okay, great. And then I'll pull up the thing. So sometimes she's curious too, you know. But when I first started doing it, you know, um, I found out about it. She told me she was going with and I did it. You know, it's like, no. The one with the, the pedophile charges, it's like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not allowing that. that. That's not happening with Pierre. You do with your life is your business. You're not taking my son anywhere near anything like that. Absolutely, positively not. And she's, she don't talk to him. She blocked him. That, that whole thing's over with, which is good. I'm very, 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 very happy with that. So, But she is openly like saying, I'm going to go out with this guy. Obviously, for you to look it up, it has to be pretty upfront, right? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is I, 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 can't, I can't stop her. There's nothing I can do to stop her to do um, – what she does, what she does is, you know, she's, she's over 18, you know, she's an adult, you know, what she does with her life and her body and her stuff is her business. Um, what I don't like is, you know, when she, she takes my son and goes things like that, but this is all stuff like in the past, you know, here now she tells me, she says, I, I promise I'm not talking to guys anymore. I promise I stopped. I promise there's no other men. I want to work on the marriage and I work on things for, for me, you, Pierre, Ethan, I want to work on things as a family. Uh, that's what I want to do. So this stuff is kind of like in the past. She's she's also gotten really good now. She's not um, it's not like heavily drinking like she was before. So she's she's you know a lot better person. She's not running around. She's she gets stressed. She goes out with her family. You know, in America, you know, it's kind of like her family's not there. You know, I never knew where she was or what she was going to do, and she would up and leave sometimes. Um, but here, you know, she's her family's all in the same building. So I was like, okay, she's at her family's. I just go down, knock on the door, something like that. There they are. Okay, fine. Um, everything is good so you know it's it's easy because we're all living the same pretty much all everyone's in the same building one person lives like in one apartment a few you know a few buildings down but everybody's in the same building so it's easier you know with me and her and the kids um here right now but yeah it was in the past it was it was pretty stressful and then i saw some pictures um like of her and somebody else while i was actually um you know here was you know when i was i was here dealing with some things um, somebody sent me pictures of, of her and somebody else and that um, that hit hit me pretty hard uh, that made me really sad but you know, she came back she said hey look I'm sorry I blocked that person I don't talk to me anymore you know I work things out with you I work things out with the marriage um, I don't you know I don't talk to these people anymore and you know work on things as the family so I was like okay it's, it's a positive thing you know trying your thing rocking, you know everything mo moving smoothly with the relationship because I mean plus I mean I'm about to, we're in the process of going through the whole renewal of her green card and everything else. There's a lot of people with that. And then with their family is here. They the kid on the way. Um, there's so many things going on um, that I got to take care of. It's stressful. But is she sleeping with these men? I, you know, um, I don't know what's all going on. 
uh, and those things in the past. In the past, I don't know what's going on with that. You know, um, would she be gone and, you know, be gone overnight, be gone for a few days, you know, you know else? I mean, she's, she's sleeping somewhere. She's got to lay her head down somewhere. Um, but, you know, I'm not there. So, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to say something that, you know, I'm not there. I can't see it. And I haven't seen any videos of that stuff, thank God. So, um, I try not to think about those kind of things as much as yeah. I can right now. <laughs> but she would go off with a man for sometimes two days and come back two days later. Yeah. I mean, she could, I mean, it could have been, you know, I, I've tried to like, because maybe he was just a friend. Maybe it was just like some, maybe she met a Brazilian local, like a, a girl or something. And she went and hang out, something like that. So, um, always try, I try to think, um, you know, in the, the best possible scenario more now uh, than before. It was always worst possible scenario. Now I'm trying to think of the best possible scenario, uh, what's going on. And, and like I said, now here in Brazil, um, with the family and stuff, it's a lot, a lot less stressful. Now it was, now the, before the worst part before the, our kids were born was I think when she would go out more than anything. Um, and then after Pierre was born, things tampered down dramatically, like way, 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 way less. Um, and we still have incidents, but I was more stressed because my child was involved. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, things happen. She's, she's in her twenties, man. I, I, I get it. I, when I was in my twenties, dude, I did some really wild and crazy, stupid stuff. And that's the way I looked at it. You know, I was like, yeah, you're like, yeah, but you know, you're married and things like that. So, yeah. But you know, I get it. You know, I, I get it. I totally understand it. And it's, you know, it's just part of life, but. Well, now she's pregnant right now. Now, are you sure that the baby that she's pregnant with is yours? Being completely honest with you, being that we're in the house, like we're all the time together. Um, she had, you know, ovulation tests, things like that. So, I mean, this there's like a 99.999% pro probability he's mine. Um, I know when she's got mad, she said some things that was hurtful. Um, but, you know, um, you know, I've considered just to, so we can just put everything to rest that I can say, okay, um, hundred percent, definitely mine. I thought about it, just doing the DNA, just to say, you know what, definitely my kid. I have the DNA, I have the DNA test to prove it. I don't want anybody to dispute it. And someone else wants to say, hey, that's my kid. You know, I want to file custody rights or something like that. He's like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, have anything like that that happen. Um, so that's one thing I consider doing just for that. Um, but I, I believe, you know, I really believe that uh, Ethan is mine. We, we during the whole thing there. Plus, I mean, I had. I had doorbell camera and thing on my house, you know, so she, I, I just, I don't see it. I don't see her having the, you know, the time because everything going on was stress. Everything was going on. You know, we were dealing with, I just don't see it. I really don't see, you know, any of that stuff. I think there's some things said to, to hurt my feelings, but I just don't believe it. And I firmly believe that both the children are mine. So I don't know. That's my standpoint right now. Okay. And someone asked the question, are you concerned about any STDs? Are you guys getting uh, tested? For that there was some things that happened with that um they were minor they were like kind of common things um so all that stuff got resolved pretty quick um some i should have really kept private i was upset when things was going on i was very upset with things going on i i went live and did things that i shouldn't have done only well, shouldn't should not have done um but yeah i mean we we both got tested those things those things all got cleared up so everything's fine now it wasn't anything like life-threatening or permanent um there are some things that was minor but it's it's, it's been resolved a long time ago, and that's all taken care of now. Okay. Now, uh, does Karini drink alcohol while she's pregnant? I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the right thing to say. I'm going to I'm going to plead a fifth on that one. <laughs> fifth on that one. You know, um, she's very cautious um, in things that she does. I'll just say that, but I'm not going to. Um, Go in on that one. I guess you say. Okay. I'm going to leave that one alone. All right. Um, now, has Karini ever physically assaulted you? I mean, she has, but it was like minor. I mean, it was it was minor. It really didn't it didn't hurt that bad. Things like that, and then it happened. I mean, she could frustrate. She do something. You know, maybe she might get mad because we joke around. Might get like a really hard um, hit or a slap to the face, something like that. But usually it's like one, maybe two, and then that's it. She gets stressed, stressed and frustrated and wants to let her anger out. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. You know, um, but, you know, I, I, I tell her, I was like, don't, don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. I don't appreciate that. You know, um, 
especially you know you know once you get really upset and like she, when, I forgot what it was that happened. I made some a comment or what I did, and she gave me a, like a <laughs> really hard slap to the face. And uh, I was like, okay, all right, you know, I, whatever it was, I obviously did, said or did something, so I was like, all right, probably deserved it, whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just it happens in anything like that, you know. But nothing that said like it was like permanent damage or anything it was like you know warranted a hospital or anything like that. I was saying yeah, it happens, you know, things happen. So how many times has she slapped you in the face? I don't know. I mean, how many times I've been annoying enough to drive her to that point. You know, I mean, I get it. I mean, sometimes I may have, maybe it was me. Maybe I got her frustrated. I got her aggravated and she just got driven to that point. Um, I really didn't keep a tally sheet, anything like that. But, I mean, you know, like every week or is, is it? Whenever I, she gets to that point and then I just kind of stop and realize maybe I'm doing or saying something that's frustrating her. Uh, maybe I should, you know, look in, into what I'm doing and change something in that regard. Or like I said, at that point, I'll step out. You know, either I'll go downstairs and they get too crazy, then I'll go to a hotel overnight. And usually it's only overnight. I'll go to a hotel overnight and I'll come back the next day and then things are a lot more calm. Or I'll go to a hotel and she'll say, hey, um, I want to go do this. Hey, I want to do that. Like 4th of July, we had a fight. So I went to a hotel and she said, hey, I want to go see fireworks. It's okay. okay. I'll come. I went and got her, took her to Pierre. We went out to a fireworks show and everything was fine. You know, um, one minute she's really mad and upset and wants to be alone. The next minute she wants to hang out and do something. So... It's, I'm just, you know, it's juggling the fact, okay, when do I need to step back, you know, and give her, you know, plenty of space, you know, when is she me to be there? And then, you know, that's so why sometimes I'll stay in the same house, I'll just give her space, but I'm still in close proximity. So if she needs something, hey, I want some food, hey, I want this, hey, I want that, you know, I can, I can help out, I can do, you know, what she needs me to do, um, which is fine. Uh, but things get too crazy, too hectic, then, you know, I'll step away completely. You know, until like she texts me and says, Hey, come back home, da da da, and then I'll come back home. Um, but then that's the biggest thing, too, is just learning how to you know, juggle space, you know, learning what's, what's, you know, safe. If things get too crazy, too, I will take Pierre with me when I go. Things get like way, you know, way, way out of hand. Uh, I'll pick Pierre up, he'll go with me. Um, so things calm down, then I'll come back. Um, but that hasn't really gotten. I mean, here in the last few months, things have gotten a lot better. She's she's promising me now that there's no other person she's talking to. She's promising me that she wants to work on the marriage. She's promising me that, you know, we're going to try to figure some things out. Um, you know, she's promised me she's working on a lot of things. Uh, and she's been getting a lot more positive. She's been doing her cosmetology. She's working in a positive direction. She um, wants to complete her, her high school diploma. She wants to try to get her driver's license. She's wanting to do some things to, you know, uh, make some positive strides in her life, uh, which is positive. And also, I think the fact of her having some, some more independence will be a good thing too where it's like if she wants to go to college in america fine you know get the, the license get the car get your, your you know, diploma go to and from school you know do your thing you know everything else um try to be as, as positive as possible um i guess that makes sense have, have you ever assaulted her like do you hit her back when she slaps you in the face no 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 you just take no, it? no no okay absolutely not if, if that if that ever was to happen uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here right now. If I ever laid a hand on her, um, her family wouldn't tolerate it. It's just, it's just a one-way fight. You're just the receiver, which you can't, you can't I throw. I mean, people get frustrated. I mean, at the same time, I think about it. I was like, maybe I'm doing something that's frustrating her. Maybe um, I'm doing something that's bad. Maybe I'm doing something that's frustrating, aggravated. So, you know, um, they look at that. And he's, you know, when I was in my 20s, too, I get angry and frustrated, and I might – say you're just kind of you know get upset i was like okay you know things happen and i've been through a lot of therapy and i've been through a lot of stuff i've been to a lot of different you know as a therapist and then um, it, one's actually a doctor and network was actually nice enough to get us somebody also um very very great man uh and he would help us out and then he was at first cranny had one that was actually like private one-on-one when she stopped going to see that individual i started to see the individual um as well to try to you know she helped me out with my mental things that Crane complained about, but also said these are things that she's dealing with that you can help her with. Like, okay. And uh, so, like I said, I still go to like, a lot of therapy. I got to do it over the phone, do it remotely, but I just want to make sure, you know, um, I'm in my best mental health that I possibly can be and what I can do to help promote her mental health as well. Um, she can go into a positive direction. And I think she's going in a positive direction. She's here with the family. She's working on her education. She's working on getting her driver's license. She's she's really looking out for uh, for Pierre. Um, she's you know 
Um, we have to do some tests to make sure everything's okay uh, with Ethan. So um, it's, it's, it's starting to look like a lot more positive now. We had a very dark past. It got really, really bad. But she's promising she wants to work on the marriage. She's promising she wants to live a positive life. She's promising that she wants to, you know, um, you know try to, like, really do something with her life. Um, and move forward, which I think is very, very exciting. I'm also very I'm happy that she says, I'm not talking to any more men anymore. I'm not I'm doing that anymore. I'm done with that. You know, I'm going to move forward with the marriage. We, we're married. We have two kids. So we need to try to do what's best for the kids. And I'm trying to do what I can try to tell her out. You know, I'm making all my, all my money I'm making um, is from the internet right now. You know, I have some other stuff I got to work on in the United States. I'm still paying for a house payment there. I'm paying for a car payment. My dogs are in training. It's not cheap. Um, I'm paying for the home here. I'm doing all that stuff. And, um, you know, she's talking about we have medical insurance in the United States to pay for the birth. Here we don't. Um, and the, the, pro the hospital here is very expensive. So I'm trying to do some things right now I'm in production with to produce some stuff to increase our revenue stream enough to pay for her to get to a private hospital. Of course, now she's saying, well, I don't know if I want a private hospital or not. Like, You're in so much pain, though. Why would you not want to? She said, well, private hospitals here, you have to be at least seven centimeters dilated before they'll do anything. In America, it's only two. I was like, well, maybe we can talk to a doctor and we can figure something out, but the amount of pain that she went through before, I, mean, I know people say kidney stones are worse than birth, but after I saw her go through birth here, I was like, no, there's no way. That was the most painful thing I ever saw somebody go through in my life, and she suffered um, a very long time. She was in labor for a very long She started here at the house, and it was had to be well over 24 hours. She was in agonizing pain, and I went there, and I started raising hell at the hospital. I, I was I was being a dick. I mean, I was mad because they wouldn't see her. They wouldn't bring her back, and she was suffering. Um, her water had broke, and she was suffering. I was like, I do something. So finally, I started getting to with, with uh, calling her doctor. Her doctor finally called the hospital and said, admit her. Let her in. Uh, so we finally got her in the hospital, and then, um, you know, everything was happening. And that whole thing, the scariest thing thing had with the birth is – we were there. The doctor said, hey, I want to show her she's eating clothes. You take your camera and do a video for a crowning. Okay. It's a little weird. Uh, so if you ever crowning, show the cranny. And the doctor said, okay, so you see you're getting clothes. Everything's going to be all right. Doctor takes the gloves off. And then doctor says, okay, so the other, uh, another person will be in here in a minute. And the doctor speaks mild English. I'm like, okay. So cranny starts having another contraction. She starts pushing. I, I see Pierre's head coming. And the producer's there with me. I look at the producer. I'm like, hey, can you go get um, the doctor? Let the doctor know Pierre's coming. He's, he looks like he's, he's coming out right at this point in time. So producer goes out, and he comes back in. He's like, hey, I got some really bad news for you. It's like, what? I was like, there's, there's no doctors here. There's no doctors in the hospital right now. They're doing a shift change. Um, they're not going to have a, a, a doctor for a little bit. But they said when they do get back in here, you know, if they're in queue, they'll be able to get to cleaning in about three or four hours. I'm like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. So I, I pull out my cell phone. He's like, oh, no, please don't, please don't cuss out the doctor. Please don't go up on the doctor. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, gonna, I'm Googling how to deliver a baby. He's like, well, you can't deliver a baby. He's like, you deliver a baby? No. Well, somebody's going to deliver this baby. So uh, I Google for a minute. And then I will admit, when I got done Googling, how to do it. I did send an angry, I did send an angry message to the doctor. Uh, but then I went ahead and put gloves on uh, and I got down and I was okay. I guess I might have to actually do this. I don't know. Well, then the doctor, the producer talked to the doctor, the doctor turned around her car. She came back to the hospital, brought, took the cranny back. They, they had the birth um, and Pierre was born. We did have a scare with jaundice because he had the jaundice thing, but he ended up leaving after about a week and he was healthy and everything was okay. So, we have a good help. We have a very strong, healthy son now. So that's what matters. That's awesome. Now, let me ask you this. Like, does Karini currently want to divorce you? Currently, no. Did she before? She said it three times. And that's one thing that's happened every time she's pregnant. And when she first got pregnant for the miscarriage, she went through the whole divorce thing. I mean, we even had we had like an emergency camera crew come down here. I wasn't even worried, even aware about because she told them I'm going to divorce Paul. So they sent down, like a, they literally sent down like a emergency camera crew because she told them she was divorcing me back then. Um, then we had the miscarriage, and then we were okay. Then we um, she got pregnant with Pierre, and then the whole thing happened too. If you watch because Full Nine Days season two, she talked about divorce. The other way, she talked about divorce. It got crazy during filming production. Um, it was very difficult. Uh, for the film crew. I'm not going to lie because, you know, sometimes you get mad. I don't want to see Paul. I don't want to do with Paul. I want him away from me. I want to divorce him. Da, 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 da. 
And then, like, the next day, she's getting on the fast boat to leave, and she's, like, messaging me, hey, I need you to come here, get on the boat. And I was like, no, you told them, the film crew, and me and everybody, you're going to be around me. You have to tell the film crew you want to see me, or I can't see you. They're not going to let me get around security to come see you. You told them you want to see me. She's like, oh, just, just come over here. I'm like, no, I, I can't. It work that way. And then eventually, you know, um, I got on the next fast boat. I went up there. Me and her met in, in the, you know, in the hotel. Everything was calm. Everything was fine. It was like a full 180. I was like, you know, just crazy, which got difficult. You know, a lot of things got very, very, very difficult with things, you know, with that. But same thing, you know, when she got pregnant with Ethan, you know, similar things happened, everything else. But, you know, always have high hopes. And we did go through things before, and there was things in the past that happened. And she would stop, and she'd tell me, she'd say, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I didn't really, you know, like that person or love that person, and I don't know what I was thinking on that, and I'm sorry. And she'd come back around. She'd apologize. That always gave me hope. It's okay. It's, it's like a rotation. You know, it's she's upset, and I'm really mad. I'm upset right now. She hates me, and then it rotates, and she's happy, and everything's great. The family's doing wonderful. We're going out, doing family-oriented things. Everything's wonderful. And then when a fight comes up, it's like, well, we're going to rotate again. We're going to be happy again. It's It was like a, it's for the last – uh, since God, I've known her since 2016, but literally for the last four years, you know, it's it's been a little bit crazy like that. But uh, you know, we have two kids now, you know, and uh, it's just trying to figure out something to make it more healthy and a lot better. You know, when she needs space, when I need to step away, what can she do to help her self confidence and her self esteem and her mental health? Like I said, with the cosmetology and making friends and uh, getting more independence. Hopefully, I think it's help a lot more. Um, trying to figure out, like I said, talking to the therapist and that, you know, what can I do for my mental health, but also what can I do uh, to make sure she's going uh, and staying in a positive direction? You know, I love her very much. You know, I want the actually very best for her. You know, mistakes happen in life. I get it. You know, but now she's saying she's sorry. She wants to move forward. She wants to, you know, um, do what's best for the family. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do to make things, you know, the absolute best life for her also. So, so every time that she's pregnant, she wants to get divorced from you. Is that what you said? Like, if I'm surprised, I mean, I saw the pattern a long time ago, and she's like, "I've never done like before." I was like, "Watch season two. Watch the other way, season one." I mean, you did the same thing that you're doing, like very similar on camera. You know, when we were in film and production, you said you want a divorce. You know, when you're pregnant with the uh, the first miscarriage, and then when you're pregnant with Pierre, you want a divorce. You're pregnant with Ethan. You're saying you want a divorce on and off. So, I mean. It happens every time she's pregnant. So I was like, okay, you know, this, you know, what can I do to calmly deal with it? I get it. You know, she's stressed. She's hormonal. Things get a little extreme. So say if she gets mad, she's stressed, she flips out. And she, you know, maybe slapped me or something like that. Maybe I deserved it. Maybe she's got a little stressed out. Okay, fine. But, you know, it never got to the point where I was, you know, where she was like grabbing a giant butcher knife or anything like that or a gun or anything crazy. It was just like she's frustrated. She let her frustrations out and then she's fine. She's calm. She's calm. She's a lot better. So I get it. You know, I get it. I, you know. It's it's fine. Not it's a fine deal. as long as she's not trying to kill you. Is that? Is... I, you know, she's not trying to kill me. She's not laying. She's not laying hands on, on my children, and she's not trying. You know, uh, you know, pulling out like knives or anything crazy like that. She's just frustrated. She's aggravated, and that's kind of like a wake up call. Okay, maybe there's maybe it's time for me to step away. At that point, I step away. And it, when we first started fight, she wouldn't let me leave. She wouldn't leave. You ain't going or you ain't leaving. You ain't leaving. It's like I'm I'm leaving. You know, and I have to like. Maybe I have to you know, try to gently out the way. It's like, I'm leaving. Um, now she don't stop me when I try to leave. When I try to leave, um, she lets me go. It's like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to head out. And I head out. Now there's been, you know, um, one time she's really upset and I took Pierre with me. She chased after me on that one incident. But I said, look, I'm just out here. She calmed down. You calmed down. Me and Pierre come right back. She calmed down. Me and Pierre came back. Everything was fine. Everything, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal at all when she calmed down. Um, but now, you know, it's if I want to leave, she lets me leave. It's not a big deal. Um, before it was very different, and in, in the four in the past, it was it was very 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 different. Like if I wanted to leave or something like that because I felt things were stressful. It's like no, you can't go. It's like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving for a little bit. Does she hit she the kids? Down. Does no. she ever? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Absolutely okay. probably not. No, she's never, never ever ever done anything like that. I, I don't think she has it in her to ever do anything like that. I really don't. I think she's, a, you know, she's a very I mean, granted, there's you know, there's one habit that she does that I don't like, and I think it's not good for the kids. But minus that habit, um, I think she's a very good, loving mother. I think that she will do anything for her kids. She'll give up. She'll make sacrifices for the children. I think you know she's always looking out for their absolutely positive, best interests. Um, so I don't think, I don't think she'd ever, 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 ever 
lay a hand on children like that, you know? I mean, does he discipline the, Does he discipline Pierre like any other parent would discipline their kid? Yeah. Should discipline him like any other parent would discipline him. Um, it's understandable. I was disciplined the same way when I was a kid. So, I mean, I, I get that. You know, I understand that. Um, but does she actually, like, do anything, like, aggressive, like, abusive? No. no what no, what no. habit? You said she has a, a bad habit? It's something similar we talked about earlier, but I'm not going to get into it. But, I mean, she has one habit, but um, – you know, she has a, she's a vice, and sometimes her vice gets in. I don't like that vice um, at all. Um, you know, but that's the only one. The you know, alcohol? Like you're talking about the drinking? Or, oh. Well, we, we had, had an agreement on that anyway. I got these little test strips. So when she's, she was breastfeeding, she could test her breast milk with the test strip. And I told her, okay, if you want to have some drinks, you know, do you. But use this test strip. And it's a test strip will come back different colors. If the, co if the color is white, then you're fine. The milk is clear. Everything's okay. Uh, but if it comes back any other shade, do not breastfeed and that was kind of like our our our, uh, our solution to that that was like our um our uh, word i'm looking for on that Resolu uh, yeah yeah resolution and that, that. so that way she could she's able to do what she wanted to do but also that it was safe for her you know children because she could test it and see if it was if there was any alcohol in the breast milk she knew she wasn't she she knew then she wasn't supposed to so that was our kind of resolution to that that made things a lot easier how did those test trips come? Like she is drinking while breastfeeding, so those test did she no, fail? She's not breastfeeding right now. No, she's not no. breastfeeding right now. Pierre's actually drinking, uh, eating real food, and he occasionally I make him some different, like different types of milks and stuff. We got him like chocolate milk and strawberry milk and things like that. And but he's eating mostly real food now. Um, but I mean, no, that was that was something in the past. In so the past. Um, okay. yes, yeah, we had what? arguments like that and everything else. So. Okay, so she was drinking while breastfeeding, and then you had these strips to to see what the levels were. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That way she understands. You know, it says on the box, okay, if if you have, if it's white, if it's like this, then it's fine. There's no alcohol, everything's okay. Um, but that was like our thing. So she can do what she wants to do, but then the kids are still safe. So that was my solution to that, and it seemed to be pretty effective. Like that pretty good. Okay. Um, now, how has your sex life been? recently like i mean has it are you guys I think still the way i'll answer that is um about like any married couple sex life was is how ours has been so if you start off when you first start dating in the first year it's wild it's crazy it's you know it's several times a day and then you get down to like one then you get down to like occasional and then you're you're at that stage where it's like you know uh once a week or something like that and that's it's slow <laughs> Like any other married couple out there, I think you could say. So, I mean, are we still, you know, active? Yeah, it's just gone down a lot. Just like any other married couple. We married three years, so we're not yeah. doing it every day or multiple times a day by any means, no. Um, you know, like once a week, something like that, yeah. But that's, you know, like any other married couple. Pretty Did normal. you guys ever file any restraining orders against each other? Yep. Um, that whole thing got really really crazy uh it was unfortunate the whole thing i would think was unfortunate but i first went down because she was wanting to take gear and run off um and i didn't want her to do that i don't want her to go out, out of state with this this other person and everything else so at that point um i went down and filed a thing first for a family court action i put on the form i didn't want i my first one i filled out when i was training i just wanted i wanted a a motion put in place um, or she couldn't just take my kids and leave. That we would have to go to court, and the judge had to authorize her before she could leave state. Um, then there was a whole thing with the other motions that went through that ended up in restraining orders on both of us. One for me, one for her, and uh, that got really crazy. And I first read the one for her because I posted it on the internet, and it blew me away. Cause the sheriffs, the sheriffs know me. The sheriffs knew me. They came and said, "Hey, man, it's, you know." You're going to be upset. And I first found out I had it. I went down to the sheriff's department. I was like, I'll come down there and get it. It's not a big deal. Uh, so I went down to the sheriff's department. Um, I waited about like an hour. Uh, they said, hey, we're here. It's your paperwork. You're going to be upset. You're going to be upset. And I'm like, you're upset. I read it. And I'm like, what the? Wow. What is this? It, it wasn't Karine's handwriting. And it wasn't how she would say things. A lot of things. Just, I could tell it wasn't her I knew it wasn't her wrote because it was her handwriting, but then the, the how it was like the the language and stuff wasn't how she would write something down. Didn't make none of it didn't make any sense. Some of the accusations were just just completely it's like this is absurd. She wouldn't say anything like this, and you know I I just was blown away. So that's when I posted. I was like, this is utter bullcrap. And uh, for if anything in it you like was factual, I wouldn't have posted. I've been like trying to hide that stuff. I don't want to know this kind of stuff. It's crazy. I was like, this is nuts. What did what did the crap is this? 
I'm worried at that point. You know, I'm very concerned. I had people calling me asking for money and stuff like that. All kinds of weird stuff was going on. I was upset. I was frustrated. Um, so yeah, it was utterly, utterly, utterly crazy. So I translate that to her parents. Her parents finally got back to her forever um, for her to finally find out. Because when Karini left, um, they took her SIM card and her SIM card tray. So when she got back in my house, the first thing I did, I had to call T-Mobile, have them send her a new SIM card. I went on Amazon, got her new SIM card tray. That way she had access to her cell phone because she didn't take literally – she had no SIM card and she had no SIM card tray, so she did get a SIM card. So I was like, what the crap is this? Um, so she got back there and everything else. We – Talk to lawyers. She went and talked to her lawyer. We got everything figured out. Um, we dropped everything on those, on um, both the orders. Um, I have a thing in place for custody only. Um, my motion is basically um, saying I, I want to make sure I don't give up my parental rights for my children. And I, you know, it's, uh, if anything happens, you know, it has like a, um, a child support thing and everything all lined up in my court motion. Um, my lawyer is very good, very great man. He's been doing this for very, 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 very many years. Um, and he has everything lined up um, in my court motion that I currently have um, just to protect my custody rights of my children so that she can't just take my children. Really like, say, if you want to go do something, you know, we'll do it together. I'll do some of the kids. I want to be around my children. I don't want you taking my children because one individual said he wanted to be the new stepdad and everything else, trying to involve and all this stuff. I'm like, I want to be involved in my children's lives. I want to protect myself to be involved in my children's lives. And I want to do what I need to do legally to protect myself so that I have full access to my children in their lives as they're growing up. That was my very big thing on that. Um, so if I answer your question or not, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, well, let me ask you this. Has Karini ever attempted suicide? She's done some things in the past that were concerning. She's done some things that we actually even halted production. She's done some things that was, you know, that, I I felt that it was it was necessary um, for her to talk to somebody. Um, they got scary. Um, I know there was one time she was in a hospital for a few nights because uh, I was concerned because she made some comments to some other people as well as myself. And when those comments were made, I felt that at that point it was best for me to take some action. Her family hated me for it. They didn't like it. But I mean, I'll tell you the comments that were made. Uh, and you can tell me your I'll tell you, you tell me your opinion if I made the right call. Uh, so she made a comment to um, somebody else that she asked them, hey, do do people that commit suicide go to heaven? Okay, that's the first thing was kind of red flagish. And she told me, she said, hey, I want to be alone tonight. Will you take Pierre, uh, take him over to your mom's house to Pierre uh, with him? I'll pump some breast milk. This is a long time ago. I'll pump some breast milk. You take Pierre to your mom's house. Give me uh, – I want all the cameras turned off. I'm like, okay. And I want the strongest sleeping medicine you have in the house. And then just come check on me in the morning. If, if that all happened to you in the 24-hour period, wouldn't you be a little concerned for their mental health well-being? A little bit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I was concerned at that point. And – at that point, it's like, yeah, I think it's time, you know, you go talk to somebody and everything else. Um, I was very concerned. I was, I was very concerned things going on. Now, she said she just wanted to sleep. She just wanted to be alone, everything else like that. But when the other person, you know, approached me and said that and else that happened, I was concerned. I was legitimately concerned for my wife. And then, of course, the first thing that happened, everything happened. If, I, hate, I hate to say stupid. Anything ever happened to her and she did do something, that I'll be the first suspect in a murder investigation. You know, and be Paul murder Karini. And like that. It's like anytime she looks like I think that she might be in a dark place. I want to get her somewhere she's in a better place as quickly as I humanly can, um, and get her in a very good positive direction. I've had several people, uh, you know, in my family, um, you know, that actually has committed suicide. So I mean, it's real. It happens. You know, um, people get depressed who kill themselves. It's it's not a joke. Um, now she does some things sometimes. You know, where. I'm not going to say what they are, but it's like I think she just did it because she wanted, you know, to get my attention. Yeah, I think there's been a few things she did things she just wanted to get my attention. You know, if someone really wanted to kill themselves, I think they they would kill themselves. They would be quiet. They wouldn't say anything, and they would do certain things to accomplish their goal. Um, but when I saw her, you know, in that point, because she had done things in the past where it's like, you know, it's concerning. But saying things like that and being kind of discreet about it, that's when I got like, okay, I think there's something going on here. I think it's time. Um you know, someone talks to her, and then that actually didn't go well. It didn't go well, the whole thing with that. Her family got upset. I was like, okay, fine. We go out to Brazil, and her family helps. And it's been great. 
I bring her, her back here. There's no mental health hospitals. There's no need for police. I don't have police coming here and, you know, police yelling at me or something or something that I don't know what's going on. If anything goes bad here, her family is like the police force here. You know, something goes rad, you know, her dad's a retired cop, you know, her mom is very, very just, you know, they're very down to earth on everything. So she goes her family and her family support her, you know, 110%. So I like that here. I like being able to, you know, deal with the facts. As long as I don't do anything wrong, I'm okay. I'm all right. Are you saying that she attempted suicide to get your just for attention? No, no. I'm saying there was. I'm not saying that. I'm saying she did some things in the past. Um, I want to put this as, as as easiest as I can. I'm thinking. Uh, have you ever had that really extreme emo friend? You know, what I'm talking about like like cutting or something. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. All I'm going to say is, if you ever had that really extreme emo friend that does some, you know, does some things kind of extreme sometimes. Yeah. It's yeah. Extreme. It's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say that. There's some things that happened in the past. This was the past. This is all the past. All past stuff. This is all past stuff. She's, she doesn't do that stuff now. She's got her family. She's, you know, she's got Pierre and everything else. She doesn't do that stuff now. She's in a lot better, healthier place. She's a lot more positive, thank God. So, you know, there's things like that. But um, that stuff I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't take as much seriously. I did took, so, 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 still took it seriously. But um, when she made the comments, or I actually, she went to the mental hospital for, you know, a few days. Um, that's when, you know, she was being more discreet about it and making those comments to the people. And then I was like, okay, you know, and I, I realized, too, I got to change what I'm doing. You know, am I doing things to push her and make her uncomfortable? I'm doing things to make her on the edge. You know, what can I do to try to um, make her, her mental health better? What can I do? Um, yeah, I make sacrifices. I want to be with my family right now. I, you know, right. I, my dogs have been trained for a long time. I love my dogs. I love my family. My family are both, you know, getting close to 70. Most people in my family die in their early 70s. Uh, so I want to spend as much time with my parents as possible. I saw David and Andy's, David just lost his dad. I'm like, I want to spend time with my dad. I want to spend my dad. I want to spend my dad. Um, but, you know, it's like I was here too. My dog, my first dog actually like gave up on life and just like died. My mom said, yeah, she got sad and depressed and she just kind of gave up. But I always put her first, and she's and being around her family and being here in Brazil, um, you know, is the best thing right now. When she's in a when she's in a dark place, you know, because she's got her family. Her brother's here right now um, from Tana Jeans, who's actually a nurse, so he's next door. So if she's has pains and problems, she can go. He can go talk to her. He speaks Portuguese. He's family. Um, so I have the medical person right next door. You know, always got her family around. And he got, like I said, he got scary, man. When I had like cops come to my house one time, like three times in a row. Cops came to my house and they questioned her numerous times. They asked her too. It's like, is he assaulting you? Is he raping you? Is he doing this? Is he doing that? And he told the police officers, she told the police officers all those times, no, nothing, that's not happening. You know, not da, 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 you know, and they came out several times. And that's when the police got frustrated. Like, there's no crime being committed here. There's nothing wrong. You, know? I mean, no, you no, talk no, about her mental sure. health. Are you still, is that, um, yeah. So are, are, is she bipolar? Um, there's been some things stated, um, some suspicions by some doctors, um, but before they could complete the diagnosis, she went through some therapy each time. Um, so nothing is 100% confirmed. Um, that's just she pulled out of therapy. But, I mean, it's like she would, she would go from one thing to the next on her moods. You know, one, one minute she'd be really super happy. One minute she'd be really sad. One minute she's, she hates me. Next minute she She's a perfect wife and everything else. So, and there's some things she did that's a little bit reckless. But there's definitely some suspicions, and a lot of people got involved and tried to help out. Um, but you can't, you know, if someone doesn't want to go to therapy, doesn't want to get help, then that, that's, that's not going to happen. So, uh, her, she does appreciate the two things I found to be therapeutic in regards to that. When I that was a suspicion, we couldn't really solve it, is um, keeping her family involved, uh, and then also keeping uh, the Brazilian church group involved. The Brazilian, the Brazilian church crew that I got her involved in, that's what that really saved her. Um, I was in Brazil, and her parents finally got a hold of her, and they, they told her, hey, I got this really got this state. Her parents had even, I didn't know, but they had even took a police action. They were putting a police action that they put there. They were marrying it here in Brazil, which means I would have got kicked out of Brazil, and I've been banned from Brazil. Um, they talked to Karini, and Karini told them, oh, no, that didn't happen. This is the truth. This is what happened. So their parents withdrew those actions. They went to the federal police. They withdrew the actions. All that stuff got withdrawn. I didn't even know about it. I'm in Brazil. I had no idea this going behind the scenes. And then her family talked to me. Said, hey, we're sorry. We're going to tell you the truth. some stuff. What's going on? Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'm 
blood, here it's withdrawn, but I was very nervous because I didn't even know about it. Um, but they talked to her, found out what was going on, and, uh, you know, um, so we'll just get her back here, we'll help her out. Um, so we talked to the Brazilian church group, and the Brazilian church group, uh, the guy finally, like, we could, he went down, and he waited in a park there for three hours until Karina could sneak out. She just sneak out of where she was. Uh, she only had access to Wi-Fi that was in it. Sneak out to go uh, get in his car. She left like um, she had her, her she had a golden necklace of Karini on it. She left that. She left a few other items. She said she couldn't take everything with her because then they would know she was leaving. She took as much stuff she could and snuck out to go to the park. When she went to the park, um, she got in the guy's car, came back to my house, and I gave him the access codes. They came in, and then um, I was in Brazil for a few more weeks. Like two or three more. Actually, no. She was in the entire time, almost the entire time I was in Brazil. First week I was here, her parents got a hold of her uh, and told her, and then she got back down. So I was probably here at least three weeks. She's in my house without me for three weeks. Um, then there was only one time she left my house for four days and went to a hotel. And then she came back. Um, so that was the only time she had my house when she went to a hotel for four days. Um, I'm not into the reason why. But uh, other than that, you know, she seemed like she was doing a lot better. And I got her, came back here, and things are moving in a lot more positive direction here now. She's got her family. What, what did the therapist say? You said that she was in therapy and that she left. Like, what did he say? Did he diagnose her? Like, what did he say? I think a lot of that stuff. I'm not sure the whole thing. I'm, I'm not there for the laws and privacy things, but they had some suspicions. And they wanted to verify their suspicions, and they weren't able to because she wasn't there to complete it. I'm not going to say what their suspicions were um, because their suspicions. Uh, they had some suspicions, you know, and they talked to me on my things and my mental health. You know, I've been dealing with mental health problems my entire life. So that was one thing important to me is I want to make sure my mental health is the best place it can possibly be. Uh, with her, she's going through stuff. You know, she, de she definitely was going through postpartum, and, you know, or that definitely happened. Um, but the other stuff, you know, we really couldn't couldn't put um, – they couldn't get a conclusion or, you know, or a, a diagnosis because she went through so I was just suspicions. That's all I can say at this point. Obviously, what they were, I'm not going to you okay. know, bring that out there, but, but they had some suspicions. But she does suffer from postpartum depression. Uh, after. She did. That was, that was one thing that we, they definitely thought was strong. Um, that was one thing that affected us a lot during production and why our filming got shut down, a lot of stuff. That's one part of the reason why she wasn't in one of the uh, tell-alls, because things got, uh, she got very emotional. And uh, Sharp and Tails, they were very respectful. And they understood that she was having a lot of stuff going on emotionally. They wanted the best for mental health. So they allowed her to um, step out of the situation so she could focus on things. If she had been, you know, doing some of the production we were continuing to do, or she had been, like, seeing the tell-all. Tell-alls, the tell-alls are always kind of always kind of crazy, very dramatic kind of crazy. And all it's going to take is one, one person to say something off and really hit her mental health and have her snap. Um, and, uh, I think they knew that I knew that I was worried about it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, they knew that. And so they just went ahead and said, you know, we're just, you know, let her, uh, step back on this one, um, respectfully. And, uh, you know, I was there and she wasn't, and that's why, uh, that way she could focus on her mental health. And they were very nice about it. And they were great. They, they had, they had a, uh, they had a, a person stay with her, take her out. She got to see all of New York city. Um, they were so nice to her and my son while we were filming. Um, very, 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 very nice to her. And they also had, um, I remember that tell-all was very nice. They had a doctor there for mental health stuff. And I had actually talked to that doctor myself. You know, I, I, anytime I have access to a therapist and I get a different therapy opinion, I definitely want it. So they were very, very nice to us in that whole situation. Very, very supportive, I can say. Does Corinne currently have her green card? You mentioned her green card earlier. Yeah, her green card, before we left, I was loading things in her SUV to go to the airport the night before. And a guy went in the back, and he stole a little safe in there. had a lot of document stuff in it. He got um, driver's license. Oh, she got her permit. Not permit. I'm sorry, permit. Got her state ID. He got her Kentucky state ID, her social security card. He got um, her bank cards. He got her uh, green card. He got all her stuff. So then I figured, okay, you know, it was the day before our flight. I was like, you know, so, so we can't fly now? I was like, no, we, should, we can still fly. We get your passport. They didn't get the passport because all our passports were on a separate safe. Thank God. So I was like, okay, they didn't get that one, so we can still travel, so we should be fine. You're not straying in the United States. We're going to be able to get there. So we traveled, and then I contacted the embassy, and that's when they told me 
everything shut down because of COVID. You know, you have to get a boarding foil. You know, until you get a boarding foil, um, you're not going to be, you know, able to get her back in the United States, which her, her green card is going to expire soon. So it's like, okay, it's kind of, <laughs> you got to get back before it expires. You can do a renewal, do everything else. Stressful. So um, we're trying to deal with that. Uh, what we can do, you know, get her back. Because even when we came back, they didn't have a green card numbers in. Uh, they they froze our her ticket. Um, it was like one of the last two flights we were getting down here, and uh, before she leave the United States, like they locked it, like she couldn't get on the plane. And then finally, they cleared her to get on the plane. I'm like because she doesn't have the right documents to come in America, then she can't leave America. This means when she comes back in America, we're gonna have some problems, which we're seeing that we are. Um, so dealing with that to get her back in the United States and uh, get her here, get her thing. Like I told her, you know, um, she'll be able to apply for her citizenship, do that. And that's one thing I searched for too. Is, you know, whatever she wants to do, you know, with her life, all her dreams. I was like, you know, get your citizenship, you know, um, learn English, you know, go to go to school, you know, spend time with the kids and look about your 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 mental health, well-being, you know, what's best for you. It's like when you go back to America, we I actually paid money, try to get a um, tourist visa for her mom, uh, her dad and stuff, because I feel you know, they go back to America, have her parents come and visit for, you know, they get a 90 day visa, something like that. They can come hang out for a little bit, see the house, see the family and help her be in a good mental health situation. So I'm definitely all for her parents coming uh, to visit with us when we come back. Um, at least some some family member come back with us. So she's got some, some you know, of her family, some of her blood uh, with her in the United States when she goes back. Hey, did he enjoy food? You good? You eat good? Oh, does he smile? Look at smile. Look at happy. Oh. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, he's oh he needs to do the diaper on, so I'll wait for a second. But yeah, I think it's the big thing. Is this you know? Um, Did you say a guy stole it? Is that what you said? Yeah, we had a guy um, at, at the camera, which he's actually in jail now. They actually the detective actually arrested the individual that has it, so he's actually incarcerated. So he actually took the green card. So we don't have the physical copy. We can't get a another one made because that's in the United States. We can't do a renewal. A lot of things in the United States. But I can try to get what's called a boarding foil, get her back. I guess a fingerprint her. When she goes through the border, they'll just fingerprint her. They'll check her finger fingerprints, verify she is who she is, um, and then she'll be fine. It's a matter of just getting her clear to get on the aircraft and then going through um, customs and border patrol. Uh, we'll, of course, you know, uh, verify she is who she is. She's allowed to be there and go from there. In, in the comment section, they're saying, with your miscarried child, did you do something with the body? Is that correct? Hmm. Uh, yes. Um, we still. Uh, that's one thing you do here, very different Brazil. In America, you can't even keep. You can't even keep a tooth. Uh, you can't even keep your tooth uh, in America. But here, um, they left. They gave us. My understanding it was something to help her cope. I didn't know exactly what it was they gave us um, until later when I found out what it was. But they did actually give us. They actually did gave. They gave us the. Um, when we left the hospital. I didn't realize what it was at first um, until later. Then when I found out what it was, I was kind of like, wow, I, I was in shock the whole situation. But we do need to do a burial. Um, where, I think Ton and Ching would be the best place. Where is it now? Where's the baby's body now? It's, uh, well, um, it is in the refrigerator. Can we see it? You like, want to see? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm just curious. I don't know much about the uh, Brazilian customs. Hold on. I didn't expect it. So was the um, just, yeah, because they, they keep mentioning that in the comments. Yeah, um, it's it's got tape around the jar, so you can't see the inside. So that's good. So it's this, this is the jar. That's okay. Yeah, it's it's inside here. Um, but we need to do a burial. I'm thinking in Tawny Chains, around her grandmother's grave. I think would be best. Um, or somewhere at her parents' graves uh, to do a burial there um, because I wanted you know to do something respectful. Um, where we're at right now, we really don't have anywhere to bury him. Where we're at right now, um, but I think Ton and Sheen's in the graveyard there. Do like some candles, maybe like a little memorial plate. I think would be the best thing. What's up, sweetie? Okay, Pop. now right here. Were you guys fired from TLC, or will we see you back on the show? 
Um, we were not fired. We were um, basically given time off to deal with our situations. Uh, one thing with uh, people that understand at 98 Fiance is anything there, you never know who they're going to have. And there's been couples. Um, there's a very popular couple on the show. I'm not going to say their name of who they are, but if they see this in a new I'm talking about, and they still do different things on the show. They were actually in production on something, um, and they just changed their mind. And they pulled them, and they now they do something differently on the show. Um, so everything always changes at any given time. Nothing's guaranteed. You know, unless if you're fired, then you, they can actually sue you. For example, um, if you are in production and you violate your contract and you get fired, they can actually sue you for all the production, you know, funds that they use to produce to where you are at that point of the show. Um, they can not pay you. They can do a lot of things, you know, if you violate contract and you do get fired. Um, we didn't get fired. Nothing that happened. We didn't get violations. Nothing that happened. Um, the last time I talked to the producer that I talked to, it was a long time ago. It was actually right around the time of the tell-all. I talked to that one particular, one particular producer. I have talked to him since the tell-all. But we both talked for a bit about it. I said, yeah, I think you're, we both talked about it. And he's like, can I step back, not film right now, get some space to try to deal with things. And he said, let's, you know, do an update when things are probably more positive. We'll talk, we'll talk about doing an update when things are more positive. But right now, I think you just need to focus on, you know, your marriage and the family um, and not stress or worry about television. And uh, he was real nice about it, real cool about it. Um, and everything was fine. You know, we still under contract. Yes, we are still under contract with them. We still have under, you know, under assigned agreement with them um but they've been nice they've been nice enough to you know let us you know um step back and you know focus on our children and focus on our mental health um in that way so she can relax during the you know during this part of the pregnancy and and pierre we can you know focus on pierre and his you know early years of development um it's been very thankful that they were kind enough to do that to us now i've known people they fired and people they fired it's a very different situation. Very, okay. very, very, very different. So you are not you are not fired, and yeah. we may see, we will see you back on the show soon. Nothing is guaranteed. Okay. That's one thing. We, there. Back on the we show. weren't we weren't guaranteed from season one to season two. It was you know. So actually, get back. Season two, we started filming season two. Well, actually, no. I take it back. No, at first we weren't going to film season two because they said if i married Karini in brazil um it didn't follow the k1 visa thing so we were going to step out then but then they continued um we went from there and then of course the other way was kind of up in the air and then you know happily so everything was kind of it happened the way it did i'm very thankful it happened the way it did but you know it's uh it's been a journey Karini is a very awesome loving mother she's been doing really great here he's learning a lot of words um getting there he's not speaking sentences of like yeah but he's doing good he's learning uh portuguese and english both Okay. Now, let's talk about your friends, because you're friends with uh, Devin and Jahoon, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in your opinion, do you think that Devin lied about Jahoon to get her child back to the U.S.? Or to the U.S.? <sighs> what I want to say is, um, I think that um, they're both good people. I think they both... I have have heard both their sides of the story. Um, and I... I you know, I, I've, I've heard her perspective for, her, for his perspective on the situation. Um, I'll say my fear is, you know, um, Karini didn't say anything about, about, you know, that regard. But other people who try to translate for try to say things in that regard so uh, I could lose my kid. And a similar thing almost happened to me. Um, so that's why it kind of kind of hit me a lot when, you know, if, if Karini hadn't told the truth and Karini hadn't, you know, stepped up to, hey, no, that's not true – on those regards of things, I would have been the same boat as him. I've been the exact same boat. So, you know, I got the lawyer and stuff. I have a, a Brazilian lawyer. I have an American lawyer. And I was very scared that exact same thing was going to happen. So, I mean, that, that whole situation, um, I'm not going to lie, hits home to me really hard um, because I, it almost happened, man. It, it came real, real close for me being the exact same boat um, where I would have my kid tug for me and I would see the same thing. And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, like I told Karina, it's like, when I see – one thing I feel – I feel bad um, for Jahoon when, when he – when I see the pictures. Uh, if I saw somebody else with my kid um, doing, like, pictures of like that, being like the father, um, it would hurt me. It would hurt me. Now, I've heard from Devin, her side, she says she has evidence. She says, I have evidence and stuff against him. If she has evidence, then it's, it's evidence. It's cut and dry. Have I seen it? No. 
I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that evidence. I just heard that it was out there, um, but I haven't seen it. So, and I've, I've heard both sides, you know, but the only one who really knows this point is the truth is God, you know, what's really going on. And um, I just hope the best, you know, whatever is in the best interest of, of their child, I hope happens. Um, and like I said, I've heard both sides, which are very conflicting. Um, I'm not going to take a side at this moment in time, um, but also I just hope, um, you know, whatever is just and whatever the facts are, the facts are. And whatever the best interest is for the child um, with those facts, whatever, whatever they may be, I hope is what happens. Did, did Devin get fired from TLC? I, I have no part um, of their or their contract. So what they, what they do with TLC is like a private matter. Thing in that. Um, so I'm sure, I think I'm like that. I mean, I saw some posts where she said some things. I think everybody saw those posts um, that kind of, I don't know and that, but I don't know. There's nobody from TLC or Sharp or anything like that that told me uh, she was fired. And I've never heard anything, you know, straight on other regards on that. So um, I don't know. I, okay. I, I'm not going to say I don't know. Some of the people in the comments are saying that you had a threesome with you, your, you and your wife and another person. Is that, is there truth to that? No, I wish. But no, no. You'd be open to it. Are you open to it? I mean, I mean, you know, whatever, you know, different things in marriage like that, you know, I mean, you know, I don't know, whatever, whatever can help promote things in marriage, you know, but, but no, there's never been uh, a threesome or anything like that. No. But you, I mean, if it would promote the marriage, you'd introduce another guy. Would... If there was, there was something that would help, the health uh, of the, that and family like that, and it was healthy, um, you know, I would consider things. I would just consider things. You could be consider. Okay. Now, um, let me ask you this, because there's, there's these rumors that a lot of cast members on 90 Day Fiance have criminal uh, records. And there's rumors that they've even filmed with people with serious criminal records, like someone with charge of murder or pedophilia charges. Um, have you heard anything or do you know anything about that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the pedophile one, that was on Dr. Phil. He went Dr. Phil. Um, they filmed down in Sao Paulo and they were actually in production um, when the whole thing happened. And that actually, like I said, they, that couple actually went on Dr. Phil. They went very public about it. Um, but apparently to, from my understanding, uh, he had actually, uh, they were in production, and then the background check was late. The background check came back, uh, found out he had some very concerning charges, um, and then everything, they just cut it off. Everything got cut off immediately at that point. The other one um, I heard about, well, I'm not going to say where I heard about it, but I heard about that there was another couple um, back on season one. Um, this, is, this is a rumor that I heard, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to drop any names or anything else like that. But there was a person they were filming um, in sh uh, Chicago. Actually, where you're at. <laughs> they were filming in Chicago. Um, they are filming Wait. a film crew. Oh, yeah, they know. You still be in prison. They <laughs> they're filming a film crew in Chicago, and they were filming a film crew in, um, it was, I don't want to say it was Ukraine. I want to say it was Ukraine. It was Russia or Ukraine. It was one of those two countries. I know it was over there. I'm fairly positive it was Ukraine. Um, and they were over there. And then uh, when the guy was in the aircraft, they, he was arrested and charged. And so obviously their storyline got canceled and no one ever heard anything about it from that point. I think that was, that was the crazy stories that I overheard. Supposedly He's happened. a murderer for murder. i charged. That's all I heard. That was a rumor, rumor that I heard. That was a rumor, rumor. that I heard from somebody uh, that was in Chicago. He was getting on the aircraft. He got charged. So the whole storyline, all that stuff all got nixed. Um, that was a rumor I heard. That was, a, that was, that was like, God, that was back when we, before me and Karina even filmed. That was before me and her even ever did filming or anything. So that was a, that was a long time ago when that happened. But no, and that's a lot of stuff. You know, they go through stuff. My background check, man, they, they went through everything in my background. They went through court records, everything, you know, especially because I had that stuff on there in my court record. Um, you know, like my domestic violence charges that I was arrested for. I was arrested for one for sending a text message saying she shouldn't get her stuff. And I was arrested for uh, one time because I let her live with me. And so she called the cops on me because I was letting her live with me. 
uh, which the police officer actually arrested us both at that point. Um, so they went through, they had to go through police reports. They had to go through all the stuff. I had to get everything for them uh, to make sure I was like, look, I'm not lying. Here's the stuff. So, I mean, they took the criminal background check real seriously uh, with me. That was one thing. They really went through everything. Um, so, yeah, they, they take it. They take. They definitely take it a lot more seriously. I think you now they really do. Okay. Except for love of so Just to clarify, I think, I think uh, one person was on the show that was a pedophile, and then you heard rumors that another person was filming season one that was arrested for charges of murder. They no, they 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 when they found out that he had that charge. They they he was nixed during production. That one. He okay. was on Dr. Phil. If you could look up Dr. Phil, the individual was on Dr. Phil. So if you look up the Dr. Phil and look up 90 Day Fiance Guy, Dr. Phil, you can look up all the stuff on him. And you can, his whole his side of the story, everything like that is all going to be on there for the Dr. Phil thing. The other one, um, I heard, I don't want to say where I heard it. Um, I, don't know. I don't I don't know. I, mean, I can say I don't think I but like I heard from somebody and they said it happened. Um, so kind of like they're in for a little bit of a whip on some things. Um, but so now they, they're very seriously on criminal background because they check. They really <laughs> check this stuff thoroughly. They don't. They don't play with that stuff. They really don't. Okay, and then you were arrested for a text message. This was my last question, but you were arrested yeah, I for. A... Yeah, I posted on social media, and uh, um, and after, you know, Karini's actual uh, one person had hit me up saying, "Oh, see, Paul's just trying to file, uh, file the restraining order. And look at this." And then I was like. That was something I got, you know, I think it was like 2014 or something like that. I forget what it was from. No, I sent a text message said, saying she would come get her stuff. So I got locked up for that. Um, the other time, like, we were living together. I got, so I posted the warrants. I posted a police report online of when I got arrested with the police description of what happened. Like, oh, my God, you got arrested for this and that. I was like, yeah, but this is what happened. I mean, I got arrested for a text message saying she'd come get her property if she wants it. I got arrested because I let her, let her live with me again, you know. It wasn't like I was like beating her, or holding her hostage, or anything crazy like that, you know. And I was up front with the cop when he was there, and he was frustrated, man. He figured out what's going on. He put her in handcuffs and me in handcuffs. We both went down there, and he said, "I'm sorry, I got to do this, man, you know, but I have to." It's like I get it, I totally get it. But and now I, I, you know, I, last time I saw, I haven't seen her until recently. Before me, Grand came to Brazil. We, I saw that ex again. Um, I talked to her for on the internet, and she talked to one of Karini's friend, and then Karini actually. Saw like they saw each other face to face. They didn't say a word to each other. So I don't know. She was there with with her husband. And I was there with Creeny, and they didn't. Creeny and her didn't talk to each other. I was surprised. I figured they'd try to make money because she always said she would be friends with her, but nothing okay. happened. Paul, this has been a great interview. You've been great. Oh, uh -oh. Baby. <laughs> baby, we got uh, Paul. You you've been wonderful. This is, uh, I, I think I told you 20 minutes. It's been an hour and 20 minutes. But um, what? Uh, where can fans best keep up with you? And where do you want to direct them, uh, like, for your social media and everything that you got going on? Well, um, I think I post the most stuff on the Instagram. And then I got some stuff on YouTube. And I have some stuff that I'm working on that I will be posting soon, um, content-wise. Um, a lot of fun. We're doing the one thing with Creamy and her cosmetology stuff is going forward on. And I'm doing some stuff, stuff that's separate. We're going out on the Amazon, do some kind of some wild and crazy stuff, uh, which that'll be, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to upload all that stuff yet. I'm still working on it. We're still producing it. Um, I've had a lot of fun with the producing of that. We've actually had the film filters that do like the Tribal Channel, Discovery Channel. Um, Moral Source Lager comes in here all the time. I think it's really, really cool. Um, so that's in the works. So I'm not sure where that's going to be. But uh, and Karini kind of stays off social media. She has like her own secret private account. She goes on to like look through different things, um, but she's kind of not really posting right now. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see on, on social. I guess Instagram. I guess Can you go say goodbye. Say goodbye. This is from Chicago. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Karini, you look great. How's the pregnancy going? <laughs> I'm sorry. How's the pregnancy going? How's your pregnancy? Look happy. Awesome. Is there anything? Huh? So she's having some pain sometimes. She's, oh, having, she's having, having some pain. Okay. Yeah. She's doing all right. I'm so glad we, we got to, to talk to yeah. you, Paul. And um, yeah, yeah. And, and it is great seeing you. And uh, we wish you guys the best. And hopefully uh, we'll have you on again soon.
Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. All right, really guys. Good Sorry good. I couldn't get to the questions. I, see, I saw there's 30 questions in the box, but we kept them so long. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, we'll do that yes. next time. All right. Thank you All so right. much. Okay. You too.